So let's continue here um, with our selection of the woman and bringing her into uh, our composite. We clearly need to, um, you know, keep refining the selection. We need to fix her hair is probably our next step, right? Because we need all those uh, nice flyaways that were being illuminated um, in the original photo. So let's go back to um, our image by double clicking uh, the link icon here, and it's going to open up the uh, image where we had made our mask. So if you hold shift and click on the mask, you can kind of turn it on and off. Um, I am going to just turn on my background layer in order to kind of preview um, the area below her. So remember how I told you that we were, uh, we kind of made this loose selection around her hair. So to get the flyaway hairs, what I'm gonna do is um, select the opposite of that area. So I'm gonna go kind of uh, around her head loosely, including her head, and make a selection that kind of looks like this. So we're getting the flyaways plus some, plus just a little bit of margin on the inside of her body. Um, and the reason we do it this way is because Photoshop likes, it, it just likes it this way a little bit better, <laughs> um, is, is all I can say. Actually come in a little tighter to the flyaways and not get quite so much background. All right, now I'm gonna do select and mask. And again, we come back in with our refine hair brush and brush over top of this. Um, and this should hopefully do a little bit better result. Yeah, we're starting to pick, pick those up. So this doesn't look perfect right now and it's not going to, um, and that's, because it's a very, very thin selection. I mean, look at how few pixels are actually being picked up. So what we're gonna do is hit okay, and that's gonna, and uh, we wanna output to a new layer with layer mask again, then we hit okay. So now we have theoretically just her hair, which this mask kind of looks like this. Um, so, you know, if we turn that off and bring the hair above her, that's, you know, we're getting a little bit, but it doesn't look great. Um, so in order to actually see the hair, because we need to, we need a little bit more contrast there in the background, I'm just going to make a solid color layer. Um, and I don't know, make that uh, maybe something close to gray um, and drag that beneath her. So now we can kind of see the selection and the hair that's being masked out. So we're missing a chunk here, so let's just come back to our original mask, and we're just gonna paint with a uh, white brush. And the way I am uh, moving my brush hardness and size here is using a shortcut, actually, that's set up with my Wacom tablet. So uh, let me, I will digress really quickly. Um, so if you, Hold down your right click and your alt or option key at the same time on your mouse and move up and down and left and right. You'll see that little like round uh, tooltip pop up. It looks like um, this. So I'm doing this with my mouse, um, alt and right clicking and, you know, click and drag. So what I've done is I've mapped that uh, shortcut to the modifier on my Wacom tablet brush. So you go to keyboard modifier and then you can set that up to be alt plus right click. So now every time, you know, we, I want to change my brush size and hardness. I just push this one button um, and then drag the direction that I want to go. So that's a little, little tip for you there. Um, so we have our brush. That's the B button on the keyboard to bring up the brush and hit D to set it to our default and white. And then, whoa, my window just res just, okay. Um, and then we're just gonna paint on the brush or on the mask to bring in that area that I left. Um, and I'm gonna kind of do the same thing, kind of going around just to make sure that it's perfect. Um, now the hair is still a little too wispy. I wanna bring in just like a little bit more, make it a little thicker. Um, so the way we can do that is to, uh, just duplicate this. So let me name this so you can see what's going on. So this is our hair mask, right? This looks like this. And this is our body mask. And that 
looks like this, minus the, the wispies. So we're gonna take the hair, I'm gonna click Alt or Option on a Mac and drag up on this. And we do this a couple times. And every time we do this, we're duplicating the number of pixels around here in the hair mask, um, which is gonna bring that out more. So, uh, you know, now that these are all a little bit denser, um, you can see like as we turn these on and off, like just we're just bringing a little bit more and a little bit more. Now, once it looks the way we want it to, if we select all of these, um, right click on them and go to uh, merge layers. And now we have our hair flyaways. And there's a little spot here that looks uh, looking a little rough. What I'm gonna do to fix that um, Let's go back to just a normal brush and click the, with that layer selected, I'm gonna add a mask to this layer and then um, I'm gonna paint on the mask with black. So again, D, X to load black as our color and then we just kind of paint away and I'm gonna do this with um, a softer brush than that. Um, and we're just gonna to want to paint away the spots that are looking a little strange. Um, feel like something like this looks good. Okay, so now that her hair is fixed, what we can do is just toss this, uh, you know, kind of backing layer there away. And now we have a pretty good mask of her and we hit Control S to save or Command S on a Mac. And that's gonna save our new mask. And so if we come back to our actual comp file, we can see that we have her and we have the little wispy hairs around her and it looks pretty darn good. Um, so that is, you know, fixing that mask. So the next step here is going to be um, kind of looking at the overall luminosity of her and the background and trying to match those a little better because right now she kind of looks like she's like well like she's been placed in um, and it's because the background is a little too dark so in order to start fixing that I'm gonna start some global edits on the background um, make a new layer call it uh, global background and drag that beneath her um, so now inside of here let's go ahead and make a curve layer and we're gonna set the blend mode of the curve layer to luminosity because we don't want to affect the color of the background, just the brightness, um, just the luminosity. So um, I'm just gonna add a little curve and brighten it up a little bit. Now, here's the deal. I feel like the background of the background, this, this back wall and the ceiling looks fine. It's really the floor down here that doesn't match, right? Like her shoes are way too bright for how bright the floor is right here. So what I'm gonna do is um, just fill this mask with black. So to do that, you could do a shift delete or shift backspace um, and fill with black. Now, here's the thing about that. I'm using a keyboard. This is actually a gaming keyboard. Um, I, it has special macro keys. So I have macro keys assigned to fill with black and fill with white. I work fast. This is one of those efficiencies. Um, you know, from now on, I'm probably, when I need to fill something with black or white, I'm gonna hit the macro keys I have assigned to do that. But just so you see it again, what I'm doing is a shift delete and then you fill the contents with either black or white and that's going to kind of reset any mask that you have. So, um, like you can see, I can do that very quickly um, by hitting a macro. So, um, now that this is filled with black, let's hit G to pull up our gradient tool and I'm going to uh, just kind of pull a gradient in here. Now this is upside down, right? Because our white is up top, we want our white below. So let's go in and rotate that. And this is using the new gradient tools in Photoshop. So um, this is new as of the most recent release. So if you're not on this release, you will see a different type of gradient tool, but you're doing the same thing. So um, let's kind of do something around there. 
So see, now the background starts to feel a little more realistic with the amount of, uh, you know, brightness that is in her shoes. I feel like something around there looks good. And then, you know, the benefit of doing this as, as uh, uh, individual adjustment layers is we can keep tweaking these things. Um, so we can always come back and, and make this brighter or darker in order to make it fit. But for now, I feel like something like that looks good. So the next step is grounding her. She needs to be grounded into uh, the scene because she's just kind of floating. She's hanging out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use curves to start painting some shadows in underneath her. We want to reference our existing shadows in our in this photo and recreate something that looks very similar to that um, in our composite. So the reason you would think, I mean, you can't just like pull these shadows and we're actually going to have to mask or create new ones using uh, luminosity curves. So to do that, we make a new group. I'm going to call this shadows and add a adjustment layer that is curves. And I'm going to pull that adjustment layer down right that looks perfect so now we fill that layer with black the mask with black and get our paintbrush we're just going to i mean this is where this becomes art right we're just going to draw with white on our mask to add a grounding shadow underneath see how that works let me do that for real <laughs> um undo 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 so to do this, you probably want to set your flow to something really low. I'm going to go 25%. Um, this is going to be the first grounding shadow that we see under her foot, the harder one. Um, and then we'll create further fall off. Um, but where she's touching the ground, there's a pretty harsh shadow right there. So with our hardness set uh, pretty hard, I'm going to go with, um, you know, maybe 40%. And our opacity or our flow opacity at 100 and flow at maybe 10 percent we're going to just brush that in um maybe do this a little quicker an opacity of, or a flow of 50. And just like that we start to add some of that weight of her body into the scene so now she starts to seem like she should be here right and that's not that's a very, very small thing. But look at how much better that feels. Before and after. It's just a little bit of, a little bit of weight um, that she needs. That initial shadow. And we'll do the same thing over here. And again, just go back and reference your original photo um, as many times as you need to. in order to get this to look uh, the way you want. And again, I just hit paint black when I want to remove it. I paint white when I want to add. And yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So the next shadow is going to be this longer, more tapered shadow here. So in order to do that, um, this is going to be fairly simple. We're going to hit L to bring up our lasso tool and kind of just draw out what we think that shadow looked like. It was kind of like this, right? If we go back and we look at this original shadow, it's kind of like a long shadow that gets tapers larger as it gets away from her body. So that's basically what we have here. Now with that uh, selection made, we're gonna go and make another curves adjustment layer and drag down. Now, clearly, this is not this does not look right. But what's cool about this is in your properties, you can actually adjust any mask. So I'm just going to add global feather to this. I don't know why this keeps rotating. Um, I'm going to add global feather to my mask by just dragging this up. And we want a lot of feathering. Okay, now that we have that, I'm going to make a copy of this 
because we really need two. Like if you look at any shadow, right, it is always harder edged, closer to their body, <clears throat> and more feathered as you get away. So we need to actually create two shadows and blend them into each other. We're going to use a gradient to do that. Um, so with the second one, we're going to pull the feather back down to where it's not quite so feathered. and then um, make a group and drag the not feathered one, or it doesn't matter, you could drag the feathered one or the not feathered one into the group. Now, this is where we're starting to stack masks, right? So now let's add a mask to that group, and then we're gonna add a gradient to that mask going from left to right. And just like that, we can start to um, blend these in together and actually i was right the first time i want to uh gradient my harder mask away from her body so put the harder mask in the group add a gradient to that mask of the group and we just want to taper it away so this needs to be black further away and see how that kind of starts to give some taper to the hard mask or the hard shadow and now that we've got that one we turn this back on and we can lower the opacity of this to maybe 25 or 50 percent and also same here maybe around 50 percent and that kind of starts to look pretty good right uh, we might want to lower the overall opacity of all three of these shadows. So we can take um, these and put them inside of another group. And now we can lower the opacity of all of it. See how this starts to get powerful as you separate things out and uh, control these masks and control the groups. You can actually really start to refine where this stuff sits um, and how it blends together. So. I'm going to start labeling these uh, so that I actually know what I'm doing. So this is uh, right hard shadow, right soft shadow, um, this grounding. And I'm just going to play around with these for a little bit until I get something that looks right. So uh, this will be in warp speed watching me add these shadows, add the next foot shadows, um, and then, you know, we'll have this wrapped up. feel pretty good about this and now um, we're done with her and she's blended into the scene so the next thing will be uh, bringing in the other elements I'll be doing um, basically the same process to bring in some of these other pieces so I'll skim through those pretty quickly in the next video um, and then kind of get to the point where we have all of these things brought together and then we can start talking about color and luminosity and tone on everybody and bringing it all in so um, that's a good stopping point for now, and I will see you in the next one.